Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will be discussing another measure of central tendency, which is median, and how we are going to compute the median for an ungrouped data set. Without further ado, let's get this lesson started. Median is the middlemost data in terms of relative position. So when we say median, we are actually positioning the data and we are selecting the middlemost data based on that position. It is symbolized by MD or X with a tilde on top for sample. It is also the most stable measure of central tendency because it is not easily affected by outliers. When we say outliers, these are the extreme values, either the very high or the very low values, meaning if that extremes are changed, there is a possibility that the value of the median is not changed. To compute for the median of an ungrouped data, first, you have to arrange the data set in ascending or descending order. Next one, we will use this formula, x tilde is equal to the quantity of n plus 1 all over 2 th. Meaning, the answer for this formula will tell us the position of the median. Not the median itself, just the position where we can see the median. Still n is the number of the data involved. To better understand how this formula works, let's have the following example. We have to solve for the median of 56, 35, 12, 20, 14, 28, and 15. But according to the first step in our previous slide, we have to arrange this first in either ascending or descending order. But for this example, let's follow the ascending order. So this second line shows the ascending order of the data for this example. Once this data set is already arranged in ascending order, we can now use the formula, which is this one. N here stands for the number of data involved. So meaning we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's why we substitute 7 here. 7 plus 1 is 8 divided by 2 is 4. Meaning the fourth term will be our median. This is not our answer yet. Again, the formula will just give us the position. We have to go back to the data set and look for the fourth term. Whatever this fourth term is, that is our median. So we count first, second, third, fourth, meaning this data, 20, this is our median. Let's try the same procedure to this example. We have 33, 19, 35, 26, and 50, and of course, 0. For this example, let's try arranging the data set in descending order, meaning we start with the highest value going to the data with the least value. Something like this. We have 50 followed by 35, 33, 26, 19, and 0. Again, if you want, you may arrange the data in ascending order in your scratch paper. And then afterwards, the median that you should compute, even if the data set is arranged in ascending order, should be equal to the median that will be computed if the data set is arranged in descending order. So going back, we have... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, meaning we will substitute 6 to the value of n. We have 6 plus 1, that is 7. 7 over 2 is 3.5, meaning we have to locate the 3.5th term. In other words, we have to get the mean of the 3rd and 4th term. Somewhere between the 3rd and 4th term lies our median. This is quite different from the first example that we have because in our first example, we have odd number of terms. Recall that we have 7 as the number of terms. That's why we can locate an exact median for that data set. However, in this example, we have 6 as the number of terms and 6 is an even number. Always remember that if your data set is 
composed of an even number of data, you will always get the mean of the two involved data based on the position that you have computed using this formula. In this case, we have computed 3.5, meaning it is between the third and the fourth term. So, for instance, you are solving a different data set and you found out that the median is on the 19.5 or 19.5th term. If that is the case, you have to get the median of the 19th and 20th terms. So, going back to this discussion, we get the mean of the third and the fourth term. So, let's look for the third. One, two, three. This is the third term. And then 26 is our fourth term. So getting the mean of those two numbers, we have 59 over 2, which will result to 29.50, meaning our median is 29.50. So just like mean, median can either be a member or not a member of the original data set, as long as your solution is correct. So say for instance, 50 here, is changed into 60, something like this. So if you may notice, an outlier or an extreme value, the highest value here is changed. Do you think the median will also change? Of course not, because the formula of the median just gives us the position where we can locate the median. It doesn't tell us about the value. Once we locate the position, that's the time we will look for it in the data set. So even if the outliers or the extreme values are changed, it doesn't change the fact that the median is seen on the 3.5th term. Regardless of what is the highest or the lowest value, the median will always lie on the 3.5th term for this data set. So this is the reason why median is called the most stable measure of central tendency because it is not easily affected by the change of the value of the outliers. So that's it for the median. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.